Welcome. This is the May 23rd Beehive Production User Call. We have Rod, Andrew, Hans, Dan, Mark, Jan, and myself, Michael, and I have a quick demo. This is last week's Vert VM image snapshot from Release Engineering, splatted down to a two and a half inch boot drive and then booted on a Thunder X. And we are looking at a virtual machine inside of that. So basically ARM64, AARCH64, Beehive is usable. It has now fancy utilities like Beehive Control and LibVMM API and things that were missing a few months ago. I can crank up to 16 vCPUs and uh, I, this just happens to have 16 gigs of RAM on, I believe, a 32 gig host. And if anyone has a quick smoke test they'd like to run, such as uh, 512-T, that's a time trial from the earliest days of testing with uh, Peter. Well, the VM is really close to the host, which is maybe 5.9 or something. So at least that really simple smoke test was uh, quite cool. Uh, let's see. It's free BSD. <laughs> it's it is working. I have basic networking going. It's in, of course, all the debug debug mode goodies and witness mode. Um, Why is, is there a standard tap core networking? A sixteen core what? Why is there a sixteen core limit? Limit that I do not know. Uh, previously, it was a single core limit like two months ago. So I'm I'm delighted that we have increased that. Uh, the Omnios, have, go ahead. On the Omnios R30, as of four years ago, there was a 16 core limit and they increased that. So I'm pretty sure it's probably just some variable or some like some math is the reason for that. Well, I eliminated all of that math in the x86 version five years ago. Correct. Okay, and that's why we got it in Solaris. Okay. It also doesn't support NVMe emulation yet. It's missing quite a few things. However, it is in a state that one can at least get their feet wet with too, without too much trouble. So Rod, if you have that nifty new, be it orange pie or whatever you mentioned earlier, give it a try. Well, like I, I, I'm pretty sure the gig's gonna barf because he, though it is a V3 oh. gig, it's got some some difference. That's what I was just Googling through and stuff and that I'm finding patches to Linux to support this specific gig. Specific so. gig, okay. So to whom it may concern, this is doing the heavy lifting like pop count on an Intel system and the AMD equivalent. So there you have it. Any questions for this machine? Mostly joking, but have you tried PCI pass for? I have not gotten that far in the last 24 hours, no. <laughs> but uh, So can this only sure. run other Beehive okay. VMs or, or sorry, other free BSE VMs or can it run a Linux VM inside of it. Funny you should ask on the single core snapshot from a few weeks, a month or two ago, I spun up Debian with no F issues. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, and that's as far as I got. It was like smoke testy for perhaps. It, was that Debian 12? Asia. Uh, whatever the latest ARM cloud image was, I just dropped it in uh, and booted that sucker up. If you've got Does a it... link to one, despite all the copy and paste issues mentioned after, earlier, uh, yeah, go ahead, Jan. Which boot <laughs> methods are supported? Uh, UEFI boot form? I will uh, show you. BSD loader, uh, FreeBSD loader, or what is? Uh, clear cat boot. This is my syntax. Beehive control is now working. It wasn't there a few months ago. It does rely on obviously the kernel module. And the heavy lifting for booting is from this package, the U-Boot B564, and I believe the name U-Boot. It, like it's U-Boot. Yes. Yes. So it's not EFI, it's U-Boot. Interesting. That's that the package that's for supported. I-386 as well? <laughs> that's a very good question. What was that? He's wondering, Would U-Boot be an option for... Uh, booting operating systems without UEFI support on AMD64 and i386 as well. Yes, if you built a proper U-boot image. Boot ROM can take just about anything. It just has to be a proper image. 
I mean, if you want, you could, if you built a proper image, you could point boot ROM at a specifically linked kernel. And um, you couldn't give it any arguments. Uh, you would have to compile all the arguments in. Yeah. Well, Which I, is why you want at least one level of indirection most of the time. I think you could, you, you, I mean, you could handcraft stuff to be in the CMOS. How do we set that? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> years and years ago, I messed around with a system with no partition table and the MBI and DFS on the disk without ever anything. And then uh, kernel compiled so that it fit into the eight megabytes reserved and then the boot block just forwarding to that uh, because it had a particularly buggy bias. Hmm. I got to I gotta get this running locally so I can find out because I, I actually have a PD2K custom build for the orange pie that I would, if it could boot in Beehive, that would be really nice. Note that the manual page is updated to, to bare minimums, which is very nice. So anyway, there's my cute smoke. Does it give the link address for the boot ROM? Uh, from the package? or I just, I'll just have to regard. go look at the package. It'll be yeah, in the package like, build. In the OS, there it is, and it's just this I believe package name, I had it there a second ago. Uh, you boot beehive arm 64 with a dash between you and B. anyway i am delighted with how easy this worked and what i'm booting from is simply the raw bm image oh and it's zfs on zfs for what it's worth just to test all the things using the release engineering vm images you said the host was a thunder x or what was the host yes it's a thunder x an aging machine but it's doing the trick it is 48 core, uh, I believe 32 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of RAM. Are there any small SBCs that they're rec that people are, are they're having people try to test this on? Because I mean, I'm, you know. Uh, referencing Rod from 10 seconds ago, let's yeah, yeah, see how he gets it. Like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I didn't know. Okay. all like breaking news and I just want people with whatever within reach to just try it. And you can, you can splat so, that VM image down on a boot device and just go for it. It's delightful. If it's one of those generic, air quotes, generic ARM devices. Go ahead, Jan. I wonder, some of those yeah. uh, ARM server chips probably don't support uh, PCIe passwords, on, but they do have quite fancy networking hardware in them with virtual functions and so on. If you can't pass uh, them through, would it make sense to implement some kind of hacky interface, maybe on top of a Berkeley packet uh, filter um, or something so that you could have a special case to just grab packets of this interface uh, and throw them into Beehive and back? Well, it's funny you mentioned that, that this machine, I believe, has like 25 gig interfaces that are completely unsupported in FreeBSD. So I'll see if I can find oh, those in. Completely? Yeah. Uh, and I admit uh, PCI pass through to a Debian VM would be mildly mind blowing. So there's, a, I had to throw in my simplest EM Nick, pathetic little I thought that old one. KVM stuff was more or less supported. Uh, what, let me try or was to it only the device. smaller Marvel chips which have support for their networking? I do not know. Um, none, yeah. none. So let's go look at none. The artwork is from a random number generator. Anyway, uh, I do believe that there are at least Michael Tukeson, and there may be other people that are running this on um, Ampere boxes. That is the one e of the mag, e -mag CPUs. Yeah. There's been there's been several messages across the um, bug stuff that somebody they're having problems with VMM loading and unloading on Emags and some other machine are causing occasional lockups and supposedly they've gotten better over time. There's been some fixes made. Is a bookworm a recent? Bookworm is Debian 12. Yeah, okay, I never, yeah. 
Devin. Yeah, the first thing I put in the chat that should be the most that should be the latest cloud damage you should be able to pull. Um, but okay. I, if you follow their actual documentation, is still referencing eleven. So. Oh, cool. Yeah, I I just did a quick search and maybe found the same spot. So I'm just hopping in Bookworm latest. Uh, okay. Let's is, see. Oh, and that isn't there is an on sixty four image of that. Okay. Yeah. So actually, I, I'm happy to maybe kick that over to another screen and try that in a minute. And well, the, the, the interesting thing might be to install that Debian 12 and then add in app, add the Proxmox URL and then pull the PVE package in. Interesting. And welcome, Daniel. Oh, uh, actually, you won't be able to easily find the URL you need. Because you need an ARM 64 PBE. I can give you a link to a Chinese server that will have okay. ARM versions of PBE on it. Uh, Daniel and anyone else who arrived late, this is a hands-on ARM 64 Beehive system on a Thunder X. An older machine, but it's doing the job. Nice. And I'm pulling down a Debian image, and I'll just aim at it in a moment. Who has So I've got a document, the normal document going on another screen just to be a good host. Um, let's see. Okay, I will perhaps change my share and new share. So I'm sorry, how did Proxmox fit into this? I was a bit confused by that. I had someone mention that just a second ago. I would be interesting to see what happens if we run the Proxmox inside the Beehive, just to see how it sees the machine. Proxmox on ARM is also not a real product, so it's kind of, you have to hand build it. Right. It's mostly Debian, and then you have the packages you have to add, right? Makes sense. Right. And there are, there are actually a, a guy in China that actually built an ISO of it. Up to seven dot something. Anyway, it should it should layer just fine on top of Debian twelve. It's just a modified kernel and and some other user land code. Cool. While that's downloading, um, if anything, I've just dropped in some of the stuff you just saw. My syntax. I see a host bridge is not needed. And I only got as far as trying an NVMe device, and it said, I don't know what that is. So anyway, uh, I will put Rod as the answer. What there. if you set the NVMe as a ZFS Zvol and then pass that through as a just a generic disk device to it, to pass into the entire thing? I was thinking NVMe emulation, but mm. every single possible test is fair game at this point. So yes, <laughs> the answer is yes to whatever your question is. <laughs> okay. Uh, that said, uh, who has other topics while a Debian image is dropping in? Just doing some housekeeping here. So anyway, that's that's exciting. There was just a minute ago, I don't know, okay, an hour ago, an enterprise working group call. And uh, Chris gave some fantastic updates on VM State D and uh, did address this question, could it sprout? support like the daemon utility he'll look at that but it's library based it's he hadn't considered that so it's now a seed that is planted um john kindly jumped in with questions about uh pci pass through on nvidia gpus that he needs for machine learning and other buzzwordy compliant things uh dan L, you were on the call. Uh, what stood out for you? Because I have my extremely biased take on all these things. Hmm. Now you're asking me questions. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, I was there. But I was busy upgrading a server during the meeting. I was just listening for stuff that felt important. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. <laughs> I didn't retain any of it. That's cool. Um, the for those following the enterprise working group, uh, they identified some areas of concern, then 
perhaps knowingly or unknowingly lit some fires and now results are showing partly thanks to this group, partly thanks to the jail folks. And I'm just delighted to see all that happening. Okay, I am on another console getting that, um, hopefully a Debian image. And if that works, I guess I'll go right back to it. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see, who else has topics while I do that? And the copy and paste is working great. It just didn't work to a VM with its own little console. Um, SH Deb boot. Oh. oh, okay. No, I'm stopping my share. Okay. No, sorry. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> just one sec. Uh, share screen. We interrupt this uh, regular program. Is that visible? Yes, that's a system D infected system. Yes, correct. Very, you are correct. It is doing stuff. I repeat, it is doing stuff. IPv6 <laughs> stuff. This is this is your cloud image. That you just downloaded booting in Beehive? Yes, it is. I will. I think I still have a path right. buffer. I grab. There's the image name. Oh, it's trying to do cloud init things. Fine. Okay. Uh, That's probably all why don't they? That, that message that they just showed, they should always mod 600 the file before they put it into. Uh, I should probably send something to Debian about that. The errors you saw in the output, the profile permissions, that should be, they can fix themselves before they push the image. Uh, root uh, Debian, maybe. Oh. What's their default password? It's not blank. It's not uh, root uh, uh, cloud. Ah, uh, help me here. What's the Debian default? Type root no password. Uh, enter. I thought I tried that. Oh, oh no. Oh uh, boy. No, you can you over tried. It's been reported now. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? They're gonna come through the windows. I love it when I when I mistype my sudo password or something because it gets reported to me. Okay, so uh, more uh, sorry, more Deb boot. Hello. I think you actually wanted to get an image called No Cloud, but. Uh, that could be true. So all I did was grab the one I linked and just dropped it in place, the FreeBSD one and nothing else. So uh, maybe it did try to do some, oh, right, no cloud indicates no password. You are. Yep, you wanted the no yeah. cloud because it doesn't have the cloud init stuff installed, which allows right. it to log in without a password. Got yeah. it. And well, I think the cloud init stuff is you've now been assigned a password by the cloud infrastructure shit, and you will <laughs> never know what that password is. Well, you can if you can get into the machine, um, but you can't get into the machine to get it right now. No worries. Um, I'm pretty familiar with cloud init, so. You said book you should one. be able to, to, oh, no, you'd have to be using Fuse. You Ooh, should now be able to bound it. No cloud. Copy. Link address. Using Fuse, you should be able to mount the EXT file system that's inside. Uh, this is true, but uh, impatience you... will take over. If you can get into BIOS mode, you can boot it into single user mode and change the password that way. Well, let you in single user mode without a password? Yeah, in, in BIOS, you just change that to read, write, and then change the uh, mode to single, and then it gives it to you as long as you enter in, I think, like init uh, something, uh, bash slash, there's some command add once you get in single user mode that will drop you into the, uh, It'll, that will then mount the, the partition and then start booting up that partition and then whip in single user mode and as read write so you can change the password. Hmm. Um, we can here one second. I'm probably overwriting the image as we speak, but I could be wrong. But I I I had been using no cloud images in the past and dead mid thought forgot that, but no worries. Uh, let's see, Hans, do you have any news on TPM emulation? Um, this downloads. Yeah, I, I sent you an email earlier today. Yes, and I'll show you I appreciate that. Um, so the 
past two weeks I was out for various reasons. Um, so I'm, I've started looking at this again. Um, I think it's a project that could be done in a time frame of two to three months, maybe. Uh, the software TPM emulation seems to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, just need to, I haven't checked it, how complete it is or how, how easy it would be to interface to it. And then I also haven't really looked at yet uh, how the um, interface to the guest operating system has to look like. I know there's pretty much two variants, um, one of which is preferable. And there's the example code in Chemo, which I can look at, uh, perhaps. So that's that. I just need to put all that into a form that I can write down and send you as a statement of work. That would be fantastic. I believe there are various people within reach who are interested in that. And I thank you for investigating. So uh, do not Is hesitate to reach out. Running? Go ahead, Rod. Is that VM still running? Absolutely. And it's, it, it is downloading the image. It's about two and a half minutes away from grabbing the no cloud image. So I will return to that programming when the time comes. Okay. You can try a username of Debian or a username of admin instead of a username of root. Ah, okay. Because the cloud init, cloud.config file has some defaults in it that will create a username Debian. Oh, cool. That is good to know. Uh, I, yeah. Okay. Let's bang out the other topics and then we'll go pound on that. Thank you, Hans. Do not hesitate to reach out to Corvin and Goran who did the TPM uh, payload for it. Uh, super minor one, Jan was doing some thinking on what does a more idempotent sysrc look like and he offered the syntax. Uh, and it's you found just a hack. Issue... It's not... Go ahead. That's just merely a special case hack. It's not a way to generically do it for all settings. You have to know what the semantics of the variables are to know what to start. And that's, yeah, you can fix it in any special case, but it does not cover, uh, it's not an abstraction, basically. Got it. And you found that sysrc is not supporting the set operators correctly. So thank you for reporting yes, that. So plus equals and minus equals it just doesn't do the set uh, union or, or difference before comparing. It just compares them as if it was a normal assignment. Got it. Let's see, Mark, I know you were working on Vagrant and other neat things. Anything to report? You had a neat project going a few months ago. I still have it going. I just haven't really been able to devote time to FreeBSD or OmniOS at this point. I've been having to pretty much check with Windows, Linux, and VirtualBox for, or sorry, Mac for our local deployments for some development stuff. So those operating systems are getting more load than I want to give them. But mm -hmm. it is, it's still alive. It's still being used, just not as developing in the direction of headless environments. Pays the bills, perhaps. Uh, let's see, Daniel, anything to report back? It will be great to see you and the other Daniel uh, in Ottawa next week. Yeah, uh, not too much uh, Beehive news. I've been playing around with, uh, with VM Beehive more. And uh, in particular, it's, it's, um, it's cloning and migration feature, which, which isn't too bad. It's, um, I don't know if it's if it's a necessary thing for uh, for lot for lots of people, but um, but I've actually started using using it a lot. It's it's really great for rapidly spitting out a billion, uh, you know, a, a billion VMs, and then you can migrate them back and forth. And uh, yeah, it's 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 just uh, pretty cool. Nothing nothing particularly fancy about it, but it does. You know, sort of all those things that we're always thinking about, like, um, you know, it does the first sort of long replication and then one while it's running and then it'll shut down and do one last uh, one last replication. So all that's built into it. So it does the sort of one, two, three uh, motion for you. And I think it's all born. So, yes, um, all born shell. So. Uh, yeah, just a, another handy utility to have around. Now, of course, you have to have permissions on the host that you're going to and blah, 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 but, um, but still handy. 
super handy. Uh, that came up on the enterprise working group call. And uh, fortunately, uh, Antronig is looking at integrating Jailer and other things because the narrative from the call was that the original author like actually understands the space and the challenges. So did I mistype this? Um, that looks correct. That's the right location. That's like literally the same thing. So um, what is it not liking? Hmm. Uh, boot order not defined. That's to be expected when you don't have a variable file. Ah, okay. So and if you have... It, right. Can you just press a, a question mark and enter? Yes, sir. <laughs> When you just say run or something, or boot or whatever. Yeah, I tried boot earlier, and I am happy to try that other image with the other uh, users. LS dev. No, no, LS dev together. That's a thing. Why is this U boot thing spitting out all this EFI stuff? Interesting. Because I think Debian's trying to default everything to EFI probably at this point. So the image is probably built on GPT and it probably has an EFI partition and it's detected that there's an EFI partition and it's trying to boot from it, but it may not have the right, uh, um, like I've found on Beehive that if it doesn't have the right um, name in the EFI folder that it won't boot. So like it has to be on OmniOS, it has to have boot x 64efi as the name of the EFI bin file that it loads from. Hmm. But I don't know what's going on here. So here's that previous image, which I didn't override. Oh. Right, override. So let's try, was it an admin user? Well, with no cloud, you should just be able to go root with no password. Correct, but no cloud is choking on EFI somehow. But whereas this image, the cloud in it image is happy. Try Debian as a username and try um, admin as a username. Okay, I like it. Uh, with predefined passwords or empty? I think empty would be scary for that. On the serial console? Or... Yes. Why would it be scary? Oh, no, I thought they're using Cloud Init to you know, create users. Cloud Init creates an SSH way. key during the Cloud Init process. Okay. And if you have that key, you can SSH into the machine. Right. Generally, Cloud and it's expecting you to provide some kind of resource during the boot uh, sequence that it's going to expect a uh, Cloud and it file. And that file is going to define your users, your packages, and everything else it does on, yes, on the first boot. For that to work, you have to run the configuration service uh, so that it can pull its initial configuration via HTTPS or HTTP or whatever. But what I'm saying is yeah. you can do that by specifying in the boot options the path to this file that it'll load them from. Oh, so uh -huh. that's so how that's how file. Packer that's how Packer handles building cloud and image like building I mean, images using the cloud in it stuff. It it creates a little HTTP server on a port and then it modifies the boot parameter yeah. to load from that file. I don't think you're gonna get into this cloud and it boot, Michael. They're, no worries. They're supposed to be pretty well locked. Um, up. Can you just set init equals uh, bin bash? Like I just referenced in the article, but that means you have to get into bi you have to get into BIOS and then modify the uh, BIOS uh, prompt to be in the single read read write mode first. Or you could try print and uh, to list the uh, uboot environment variables in the bootloader stage. And then uh, find the invocation mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. copy and paste the line, except for uh, where it says the kernel, you just say uh, kernel and then the kernel arguments. Yep. That's and then right. it should go to single user mode. I will leave issue. that to the reader. Although, do you think from that loader prompt I can get into single user mode? Yes. Okay. So let's tell me Abort what the auto where... boot escape. Okay. A print env. Okay, that's a bit more than I expected. 
expected maybe there's even a pretty fine variable you could run uh, to do, uh, okay, run distribute CMD. Mm -hmm. What's the distribute CMD? Um, What's the command? Can you just use Tmux to scroll up? Instead yes. of your terminal emulator, then it should. Well, oh, uh, this is what I have. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that's the beginning. Okay. Boot, so boot, print boot, and boot. Boot to yeah. This reboot command was something to look at. Uh, okay, it's been a while. And the last time I had to figure this out, it was on MIPS. Uh, anyway. Um, I'm pulling access single user mode from BIOS, so I couldn't tell you what to no, do here. Uh, the U-boot stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. MIPS, okay. Yeah, nothing. There it is, you. okay, right there. Uh, is it boot single? <laughs> Maybe. That would be too easy, wouldn't it? That would be too easy, yeah. That was uh, what I was hoping for, basically, that there was some kind of hint. Uh, so, or some variable you could... Uh, access mm. so that you only have to change maybe the unit path or some, whatever they call the variable. Scan for scripts, okay. There's a bit more automation in there. Anyway. Boot sys linux what? underscore comp exe linux that maybe that file if you can access it it might have some of the parameters. That's the only configuration file I'm seeing it's reading from. Uh. Uh, that would be probably FUT LS or just LS, uh, depending on what the file system they're using. Okay, well, it's more file system specific, not necessarily to the boot. Okay. It's almost LS. Is... Go ahead, Rod. FS info, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Or FUT info. All right. The boot is calling an environment variable that isn't defined. Hmm. Your boot CMD, if you look in the environment, boot CMD calls some other. It doesn't oh, run. Just... Other... Oh, there was an EFI command. Uh, EFI config or something in that list that you were just. No, oh, really? Uh, I'm um, searching EFI config. EFI config. A mini driven, maybe look at that. <laughs> Try it. E EFI config. In you boot EFI config. Ah, okay. Ed edit boot options. Yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, well, there's none. Ah, okay. Quit. That might be framework stuff for uh, change boot. Oh, that change boot order might fix your issue on the other one. This. On the one where it yeah, couldn't find the right disk. Yeah, you might have to edit instead there's of no, no because it's not entry. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, these are definitely signs of life for experts to jump into because I am no Debian expert. Uh, anyway, uh, I am delighted that people can get this far without a whole lot of trouble. So I may a thousand flowers bloom. <clears throat> anyway, uh, is that enough on this system? <laughs> or do you want to poke at the... Uh, cloud in it one uh sure oh okay generic no cloud no cloud no boot rom did i delete the wrong line i probably did oh yeah i deleted the boot rom not the oops yep Uh, what was that EFI? EFI config. Okay, none listed. You would have to add a new entry. There is no existing entry. Okay, well. You can just try it, but shows up when you do. Okay, so, file. Ah, click on, go to file. I know where to find this usually. It's in, uh, okay. select, file, select file. No block device. Oh, no, I can't help you if the block device no is down. But usually there's a partition that's called, it has the EFI variable on it, and it'll usually mount that on Debian as slash boot. And then there's going to be an EFI folder inside of that that contains a file called boot x64.efi. Mm -hmm. You want to add that file into where this file field would be at normally. 
is one of the problems of Debian that they don't use for portable location, but observe the recommendation and only install into the custom path unless you're on a boot medium. Hmm. That sounds like the case. That's how, the way I remember it, yes. Because uh, that's also always a depth conf you have to change it. And now that FreeBSD can see if uh, the um, if I were it separately from the boot uh, ROM, you can finally persist the one which gets set up the EFI variable telling the EFI from where to boot from. So now if you keep that file, you don't have to use that conf to install uh, the EFI bootloader to the portable location. But uh, yeah, it's... Um, well-intentioned, but annoying. Hmm. Anyhow. Uh, and technically, they're doing it correct. Just everyone else uh, plays fast and loose with respect because it works better in practice. <laughs> Can anyone think of another ARM image to just drop in and try, like no cloud? And for what it's worth, there are apparent... OpenBSD? Yes, and apparently there are those uh, OmniOS images, apparently, alleged. Oh, yeah, there was an OmniOS image. I forget about that. Arm image. So. Hmm. Index, snapshots, we like the sound of that. Let's see. Uh, install image, or is there a... They've never been one for, like, cloud images, I will say. Should I try, like, a... Ba, 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 install 75 and give it another one, maybe? Yep. Relink address. Let's see. Did you try the generic ARM64 image? From whom? Uh, that was the, I thought the first one I had there. Let's see. The generic happened to be cloud in it. So yeah. there's that. Um, so that should actually say generic cloud, not, these are all cloud. Oh. The whole directory is, um, and I bet you, the standard Debian image is going to assume EFI. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like Omnius doesn't have ARM64 images, so there's no cloud for an Omnius around this, so. I did include a link to some Ubuntu images. Oop. That might work. Um, so booting the OpenBSD image, if you can see that, it uh, it kicks me into the bootloader, um, which the naming SD0 should probably be like um, virtualized things. Uh, so probably not the same. No, no, you're in the, uh, the OpenBSD bootloader, and it's... Uh... So um, the question would be, does it... Recognize no, it's not right. What's your um? Uh, yeah, it does have a device BD zero. Repeat that, Jan. Instead of SDA zero VTBD. Right. Uh, can I do this? No such oh. directory. Oh, and I was looking for SD. Oh, I have an idea. Uh, let's see. Quit, reboot. Okay, so VI open BSD. What if <laughs> we'll find out real soon if it has uh what is it? AHCI, is that correct? No, Vertio looks like no, but I think AHCI and Beehive HCI. No, no, what's yeah, HCI. Oh, HD, thank you. Yes. Thank you. I, I yeah, current multitask here. H D. D. I mean, I'm trying. I'm trying. 
I'm trying. Takes a village. Okay. Ah. Device zero unknown. Well, what is device? Yeah, that's time. It's the U board. It's not called a slash dab in the boot loader. I just type a question mark. Hook. Enter. Ah. Okay. LS fat. Uh, fat fat info. Oh, uh, there's a. So the problem now is apparently the device that you one at a time, one at a time. Uh, and ah, okay. And go ahead. Uh, either Rod or Jan, pick one. Uh, it looks like uh, the SATA emulation uh, is not supported by the UEFI boot from, so it doesn't find anything to boot from. With VitIO, you get one. The problem is only that the OpenBSD bootloader tries to um, boot the SDA device and that's not supported, but try the VTDB0A. Uh, it just where it says SDA in the example, uh, try VTBD0, virtual uh, block device. V uh, where are you seeing devices? Oh, vert I, oh, that's even listed. Okay. Go back to the configuration you had before without SATA and with VitIO. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. Because you got at least one step farther that way. And aren't there different VertIOs? Like there's VertIO block and VertIO um, something else? Net or no? Oh, or is that thinking network? The SCSI one? Mm -hmm. Okay, there we are on the previous. I love how quick it is. <laughs> so, um, okay, where are you now? Why didn't it? This is the, the machine with the VertIO block device. Mm -hmm. But you interrupted the boot, so uh, you have to print type boot enter probably, right? Uh, I will leave it with its lovely short timeout without any intervention. So boom, boot, and all right. Oh, Once you're... wait, what? There you go. I didn't do a darn thing. So wait. Um... Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Right again. The next time we get into it, can we look for that path EFI boot boot AA sixty four dot EFI? I'm still really freaking confused why it's even spitting anything out EFI when we're loading a boot ROM that has U boot in its name. It mm -hmm. may be that U boot have implemented some of the EFI services, but again, uh, you interrupted the boot. Oh uh, well, yes. Uh, so okay. So now you're at the OpenBSD bootloader prompt. Where would you yeah, like? That won't... Okay. Reset. Reset. Quit. Exit. Ah. Machine reset. reset. So. Oh at... wait. That builds it's in... and it kicks on. It's at. loading a BSD .e. It did that last so time. Then it quit. Now it's wait. Collapsed. Uh, okay. You can actually get a lot farther than I expected because that booting SDA means that it can read the kernel mm -hmm. and it's reading in the kernel and seed file and so on. Um, so the next step would be to set up the uh, default system console with STTY at the prompt you were just at. And it says boot uh, closing. Uh, this one? So STTY. Yep. Just, hmm? okay. So uh, that's interesting. And if you want to drive, go for it. I'm not, I haven't used OpenBSD in years. So the, uh, and it that already says cons.com. So um, okay. can you type help STTY? Mm -hmm. STTY help? No. Uh, Those are. Right. Um, uh, you can request control. This is your call, not mine. Yeah, no. Ah. <laughs> but it, you probably have to configure the uh, uh, STTY uh, set TTY com zero. Uh, that uh, set oh, space yeah. TTY space com zero. It can also lock you out of its well. So now just try boot. Mm. 
And, and it's still boom. Okay. Um. Oh wait, did you disable the MS Amazon? So oh, no, that's MD. That's MD sixty four specific. Uh, how many cores does your virtual machine have? Oh, I actually threw all the cores at it. So maybe we should try throw one at it. Throw okay, one at it. Throw one for for starters. Welcome on Trinig. Uh Hopefully it's obvious what we're doing. I mean, you probably don't need that. What's the exit thing at the bottom of the script? Oh, uh, just to, so I can have a bunch of commands, uh, notes there without it oh. uh, executing my notes and extra devices and such. Ooh. Okay, boom. Uh, um, try uh, a Echo dollar question mark. So, mm. oh, on, so now we oh, on that one, exit it stated. Oh, sorry. Uh, on on the host, not the VM. I guess it's yes. yes. not really a shell yet. It's okay. Uh, yep. Echo. Okay. Uh, does your script uh, lose the exit seat? Oh, yes, it probably does. Thank you very much. So, open BSD. Before the exit, do an echo now. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, you're right. Um, echo. Yes. No. No? Yes. Just don't put anything afterward and you're fine. That was my thinking, but uh, let's see. We have, it'll only be a few seconds here. Let's boot that bad boy. Maybe you even put an exit before uh, it so that you don't have any process in between. And... The lack of a seed file is okay. Um, oh yeah. By chance, it's not running it in like a background process or something, is it? It's not like freaking no, no, a bunch not. of these. Okay. Yep. Anyhow. Uh, but it's signs of life for experts to jump in on. Yep. So I'm delighted by that. Are we able to boot anything? Oh, FreeBSD is quite happy. We got a Debian image, but couldn't log in, and so we're just going down the list. We're now on OpenBSD. <laughs> That's good. I mean, yes, yeah, it is. Only OS would be the next one. And uh, marketing. Came up. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> does, I would rate this fantastic. <laughs> yes. Does um, what was his name? Raspberry Pi Five have the virtualization uh, set? Uh, Rodney touched on that with his new device, and he's chasing down the gig on it. Uh, Omni OS oh. downloads. Let's see. Does FreeBSD even support the Raspberry Pi 5? No, it's out of tree. It's it's whip in progress out of tree. Okay. As far as I know, uh... I think there's some there's some email threads. I think Mark can tell you how to get booted FreeBSD booted on a Raspberry Pi. I think you have to run a you got to go get somebody's ED2K image. Oh. Uh... <laughs> and get an EDK. The same thing I do on Orange Pi. So I'm using an ED2K EFI boot. For Orange Pi to get device support. Well, I mean, I mean yeah, that does fine. Bring, that does bring me to the question. Like, say, if you are a company who wants to make an appliance and you don't care about money, like you, let's say you, because this is like an appliance that you have to sell. What would be the board to go with for FreeBSD? I wouldn't buy a board. I would have a board built around a preferred chip, a preferred. Okay. Chip. And I would avoid Broadcom because they're not going to tell you shit about inside the chip. Or, of course. So unless you buy a million chips and sign your life away in an NDA. Ah, uh, okay. Because because like we uh, we are at the point where when people want honeypots, they're like, I don't want to do a virtual machine. Can you just give me an appliance? I'm like, that's a thing of the past. But if you really want to, let me think about it. Uh, maybe I should just send them an x86 appliance, but ARM seemed nicer or cheaper, rather, not nicer. Well, like you what said, is... money, money wasn't an objective. <laughs> an object, yeah. Yes. Uh, if all money of some is an issue, I would go look make at... it nice and heavy and have them pay per kilogram. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> if you're going to go x86, I would go look at some of the quantum boxes. Okay. Q U T O M out of China. Oh, Quotum, yeah, they, totally. Um, yeah, they make some small, inexpensive boxes that are x86 using Atom or something. We even like we even found this like Panda something from China. 
and uh, they, they were like in their official docs. They're like, we've tested open sense and it boots and everything works fine except Wi-Fi. I'm like, that's good enough already. Yeah. The thing we, I'm talking about the quantum boxes is is in typical that you get the Wi-Fi is in a E key M.2 slot. Hmm. So you can put whatever Wi-Fi card you've got in it. That's also why I like the Orange Pi 5 is because the it's the wireless isn't built in. It's it's in a it's in a standard laptop slot. And they put NVMe in there too. So hmm. if you want to go ARM, I can strongly recommend the Orange Pi 5 Plus. The heck is this? This is top. <laughs> um top, top trying to run in the terminal that it's got the wrong size on or something. That is easily possible. Uh what do we know about no uh, alpine no cloud images? Copy link address, uh shut down dash p now. I do like how quick this is, even though the machine takes forever to boot, but that's okay. It's a one-time operation. And then Alpine should be small. Say that until you put production load on it. Ah. Oh, cute. I uh, know. Really, guys? No, no, no. Give me a raw image. Really? Oh, no, that's not ARM. Okay, ARM. Give me an Oh, ARM look at Bandit. Yeah, so they're supposed to be good little x86 boards. AARC 64, OCI. No uh, what uh, performance do you need from the system? Because maybe a little super micro uh, mm -hmm. short 1U uh, server with uh, front-facing I.O. is the way to go if they want something that looks serious and is easy to deploy. Because uh, these uh, two-post rack uh, servers with low power chips, uh, out of band management uh, on a dedicated port, uh, two or four, uh, Ethernet ports on the main board and uh, yeah, a single power supply. So yeah, it's a bit bigger, but it's easy to rack uh, because it's just a little server. Mm -hmm. But uh, from the power uh, requirements and depth, you can easily mount it in a Tilco rack. And if you want an open source experiment, you can get an old, um, oh, damn it, I forgot the uh, name of these modular laptops. Um, no, framework. Because it, framework, because mm -hmm. they uh, also have um, CAD files online for uh, cases. Uh, does anyone know the Alpine Google Compute default password? Because <laughs> hopefully we have a system in a few seconds. Oh, you should try root no password first, of course. Uh, I'll, I'll look it up otherwise. Uh, is is this visible on the screen? Do I have the share right? I think so. Yes. Root, Alpine. root. The login user for all images is Alpine, according to Alpine oh, Linux. The Cloud user? Org. Yep. Oh, okay. Just one sec. It'll probably bark, but no password or with Alpine Alpine? Uh, it doesn't say the password. It just says the username. Mm. So you have to battle. Well, we've reached the login prompt for several OSs. <laughs> root, root, and yeah, no. Okay. Um, does meta mean metadata with the, oh, it the password? Hello. Well, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Uh, yeah, great. Um, Not to be the Dexter in the room, but is all of this recorded? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So yeah, uh, so you and the uh, watching this years later, what's what's the password to Alpine Google Compute? Yeah, it's, according to everything I'm finding, it's, it's local login root, no password. Boom. <gasps> wah, wah. 
Hmm, that's the G Root Alpine or um I tried that, but let's try A L P I N H. A very common in the Linux community is also root root and root yeah. tour. T O O R. I've tried root root. Let's try tour. Uh, okay. Uh, root GCP. It's a Google compute image, as I call it. Anyway, uh, nonetheless, it, we're, we've seen the login prompt to several OSs now. Uh, at Linux is doing remarkably well. Supposedly, it's a boot no password, uh, according to a quick Google search. Including the GCP image? Yeah, the other thing I'm finding is root alpine, or the two passwords. Mm -hmm. It's either nothing or the lowercase alpine. Root A L P I N E, which I'm love it. Okay, Alpine, Alpine. This is a no cloud image, right? And if this is a Google Cloud Compute, they probably have a mechanism that exposes the configuration file as it's booting it up to configure it with a random password. Hmm. Well, let's. Oh, I do see a bunch of Shelly things. Let's see. Default SSHD. Okay. Um... You don't know for cloud init sections, it'll be pretty obvious if it's doing cloud init stuff. If it is doing cloud init stuff. No, do you have file system is probably That's a bit a kernel. for that. Yeah, we're into kernel land. Uh -huh. Maybe uh make I sure that third. it's the first boot. Maybe it only prints it on first boot if it prints it at all. I was did I reboot it? I'm sorry. Yeah, it may have. My bad. Uh, Jan, this IPU system that you've sent, are those, uh, uh, like, they remind me of the other one, it was, it was called APU systems, I think they are shut down now, because AMD is not making... Yep, the, uh, it's, they used to sell the uh, Alix and APU boards, but those are no longer produced, it's basically their successor product. And it's probably just some random China board uh, with a stable reseller in front of it. I see. Uh, but at least they give you the option of picking what you want and getting the same board more than once, unlike I Express. These ones that have like a lot of NICs on them, they sound like a good idea for like small business routers. Uh, again, the, yes. And... Back then, I had a Haswell-based board, and it was one of the few uh, passively cooled systems with a well-designed um, uh, cooling solution so that even running M-Prime on it uh, wouldn't uh, throttle the CPU. Mm -hmm. But I bought the one with a smaller CPU because, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, hey, Michael? Yep. Just try SSHing to the IP address that was designed at that VM. Um, so yeah. But this um, Latte Panda Sigma machine seems very interesting for me. Uh, I don't think it has a casing, but other than that, I mean, it, it looks really, really good. This is using tiny cloud, not cloud in it. Okay. Uh, I've heard about that, but I haven't used it. It's the alternative to cloud in it. Let me see if there's any way to get past that. No. Uh, Enter. On SSH even? Okay. Um, yeah, you can, you, you can, okay, it, they didn't do that. I'm pretty you sure Tiny Cloud's trying to file to hmm. Alpine, Root. Um, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. No worries. <laughs> and I'm looking <clears throat> for official Google Google Cloud images. Uh, building an image. No, I don't want to build an image. I want to be lazy. Cool. Anyway, if you can think of another image to throw at it, I'm happy to. Otherwise, there it is. But networking's working, uh, basic boot is working. So those who have the environments for CloudNet and friends, well, have at it. 
And Michael, what's what's your machine? Is the Thunder X? It's a Thunder X, yes, sir. Hard. Painter base. Looking at Santos here. Okay. Um Ooh, it's big. Um uh, sure. Copy. I wonder if there's anyone who allows you to rent bare metal AMD 60, uh, oh, sorry, ARM 64. That would also be interesting. Well, do we know what Oracle's using for their ARM 64? Apparently it's like quite cool. No idea, I'll check. Oh. I think the biggest unit you can rent is basically single tenancy on the machine, but there's still the hypervisor underneath. Because you can Open hmm. up to all the capacity of one system. And Google's not friendly either because it's like ARM 64. Did you mean AMD 64? I'm like, no, I did not mean that. <laughs> exactly. Don't you love it when it helpfully corrects what you want? There are some providers, it looks like, that provide ARM 64 based cloud servers that aren't necessarily conglomerates like Google and Amazon. Hmm. Uh, no, you know, I'm not necessarily familiar with them, so I'm not going to say their names. So, yeah, th there was this one I think called Equ Equinix. They have like a yes. massive data centers everywhere, but uh, yeah, just uh, a small group there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if they provide. Oh, yeah, they do bare metal. Oh, that's nice. Hetzner does too. And I was just a quick Google search here, but there are a few cloud providers. They're smaller than than Equinix, so. If we're anti big corporation, then yeah, then Equinix is probably better than I. Hetzner is probably the more friendly of the, the, the options. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, I need to head off. I will. So uh, at Hetzner, you can rent. Thank you, in, Andrew, and have uh, a great weekend. Altera uh, Q8030. In the dedicated uh, server here. Go faster. But I don't know if you want to spend that much for your ARM64 dev machine. <laughs> I mean, it's appropriate for what you're getting, but do you need that much? Do you need 80 cores and 128 gigs RAM? Oh, probably not. What if you're emulating your x86 for code on this ARM machine now? <laughs> <laughs> you might need it because you don't know how to optimize it. Uh, Anshanig, VM Beehive came up on the Enterprise Working Group call. Yeah, I think you have some kind of plan to either merge in Jailer or something. Can you enlighten the group? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, 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 there are two things I'm planning to do there. One of them is uh, integrating VM Beehive with uh, a single file of Jailer, which, which it will allow it to create jails on demand uh, and then run the Beehive process inside of it and then use DevFS. Uh, was it DevFS CTL? Dev CTL? DevFS CTL? Jan, which one was it? The one that you can modify the uh, allow list uh, on the fly, mm -hmm. basically. Which allow uh, list do you mean? Uh, which oh, def DevFS we're... command just to change the device's command point? Yes. Yeah, that's just DevFS is the command. Yes. Man, like def... a file system. Yeah, there you go. That's the one. Yeah. So where we would be like, hey, now this jail that just created and is running only Beehive needs to have access to an interface called tap VM10 zero, for example, right? Exactly. Uh, which we only need, I also will need because uh, currently with the way that it works with, um, uh, what's his name? With VM Beehive is it generates the tap interface on the fly, which is nice. And uh, we get the tap interface name and we allow it in that jail or the tap interfaces if you have multiple switches. Um, and yeah, that's, that's one of the major things that um, I'm planning to work on as soon as I'm done with my other two major projects, which is Jailer Migration and uh, Collabora Office on FreeBSD. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I had a look into the code. Seems very straightforward to integrate them. And um, uh, the author, the, the maintainer's reaction was, hey, like send a 
send a pull request. And uh, if the code is clean, then we'll just merge it, even though they're not doing a lot of development these days, more like on maintenance mode. Uh, although, Michael, I, I'm thinking if, if, if that goes well, maybe it might be a good idea to also use the um, Beehive uh, config file format as well. Amen. Because it predates yeah. it, obviously, like every other. Yeah, with a lot. Yes. yes. So that, that might be also an interesting thing to do. Um, does it insist on creating the uh, interfaces and devices itself? Or can you pre-create the interface and then it will just reuse it? Because you otherwise both. you're get it, going to get into a fight. Uh, yeah, no, because, you can do both. Um, yeah. You can okay, do both. If it can just reuse it, then you can. Exactly. Uh, that's nice because the tab interface uh, unit number, which uh, is relevant during the creation and then for the symlink to point to is dynamic, mm -hmm. uh, unless you prepare to allocate static tab interfaces, which is mm -hmm. really annoying. Yeah. And uh, to deal with it, instead, it would be better to just create one, uh, then unhide that, rename it, make both the, uh, the symlink and the original device visible. Yeah, and do the same for the um, non modem devices. Yep. Um, Michael, you said you have been present at the uh, VM state D updates from uh, Chris. Did he make any progress with using uh, uh, PTYs instead of non modems? He didn't mention anything. Um, okay. To sort of watch, I guess, the repo. So, Rod, to your point, like, what is all this EFI stuff? We're not booting with EFI. It's trying. No, but... I no, I went and looked. There is EFI supported stuff been added to later U boots. It can now it understands a EFI partition and other. Oh, stuff. really? So, okay. Yeah, I do not know. I do, I would. I need to go look at that port that you're running and see exactly what code they're pulling in. Which actually makes things very further. interesting for, for my scenario because having U boot and EFI support in a common BIOS image um, for my orange pies would be really nice. Uh, never huh. you before well, you before you go into the BIOS screen next yeah. time. Uh, yeah. If you'll edit that and then add uh, turn off quiet, that way we can see what's going on in the kernel as the kernel's booting up. Say when. Here or later? No, no, next up. Press here, here. Press E. Oh, press e. Sorry. Oh, I, press e. Oh, I, I know I missed it. Missed it. Hold on, no, yeah, it's very quick. I need a slow machine. Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try again. So, press, e. press E. Press there E. There you go. Yeah, E. Okay. E. Uh, go down. Then... Can I push uh, V for buy mode? A bit more down. No, you push any further down. That's it. Down. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Let's see. Uh, that's a blacklist. That's oh, they've set if names to zero. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, consult consult tty zero. I mean, it's not in quiet mode. That's for sure. I uh, yeah, it just quits. So I guess it's not even getting to the kernel then. Hmm. But normally, if you wanted to get into single user mode, see where it says ro, the one line below that, you would change that to rw and do init equals bin bash or something right after that to get single user mode to change the root password. Yeah. Well, we don't oh. get find this one. Yeah, not, not right here. Oh, not that. Anyway, I'll push other buttons with what reckless abandon. You potentially just uh, persisted or corrupted. That's just state fine because uh, this machine will probably get be replaced by the next week's snapshot. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, I will let the experts on the respective just... systems do their thing. Go ahead, Rodney. You're just running the latest FreeBSD 15 snapshot? Yep. Uh, I just, it's right off of release engineering snapshots. Nothing special at all. <laughs> and uh, the cool list, it's a ZFS image. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't believe the FTP server is still live. Heck yeah. I got all the time. Uh, snapshots. FTP is a great protocol. 
FDP is a horrible protocol and needs to <laughs> die a fiery, well deserved. All the multiple ports. What's wrong is that it needs about a dozen network round trips before the first useful bit starts flowing. That uh, at least an active node, the client suddenly needs a reverse connection. So now uh, all the annoying middle boxes on the network have to not just uh, sniff the protocol, but actually um, and pass it out and then open up a reverse um, port forwarding. No, just, you know, you know. Yeah, okay. You know these the large neat hack enabled by this uh, design mistake, which is excusable because it's older than TCP, uh, is that you can do a direct or, or server my, to server uh, transfer if the servers support both active and passive mode. You know these yeah. large family gatherings where your cousin from your mom's side and your <laughs> uncle from your dad's side start talking about progressive and conservative politics? This is what it feels like. Hmm. There you go. No, I wouldn't say that because... So whoever asked about ZFS I images, was they're hiding. I was mostly anyway. kidding, uh, but <laughs> I also use FTP. It's just that uh, I wouldn't recommend using it when just... Plain text HTTP. Uh, I, I I just can't wait for, I just can't wait for Amazon to have like FTP as a service. Because <laughs> like uh, at yeah. some point they're gonna do it. Because like, do you know how many people run FTP on their VM two? What is it? What is it? EM two instances. At some yeah, point they're, they're going, going to charge you uh, as free like egress rates. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure someone makes it available as a virtual appliance. How do you spell that? Recourse. Thank you. With S3 as backing storage so that Amazon still gets paid or something. Oh, and they also charge you just for the egress bandwidth. So, yeah, they already uh, charge you. Uh... Okay, gang. Anything else? <laughs> yes, uh, I just have a single question. And. Rodney, uh, you said that you run your own ASN, am I right? Yes. And uh, was did you like buy it a long time ago, or how how did that happen? Because I I, I, I I did not have to buy it. It is so old. It was before you had to buy them. <laughs> <laughs> they were just giving it. Okay, that makes a lot more yeah, sense. Yeah, okay. it used to be that you just send a mail. Uh, Asking, hey, um, can I uh, have to, a resource? You had to document that you were multiple homes through different in entities, and you filled some paperwork out and sent it to them, and you got an ASN. Wow. Okay, that sounds interesting. I have. I worked with some gentlemen, other gentlemen that I think between the. Three of us, we have five ASNs. And are you multi-homed right now? Yes. Okay. Antranig, can you host next week? It might be a challenge during BSD CAN. Would be my honor, sir. Cool. Thank you. Well, please try the aforementioned images, UFS or Z ZFS, on your ARM hardware of choice and just report back because the wiki does have the basics, but it's mighty thin on like, hey, here are the boards to get. And that despite there being a big sale going on for an Ampere machine for 2,500 bucks to you. What? That's a lot of money. Uh, that was- Where's an Ampere for 2,500? I will find the link, just one sec. It was on uh, Dave Neary, who's with Ampere and- I don't know if they still have a Portland office, but I sure hope they do. Uh, let's go find that. Do, 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 do. Um, oh, boy. Uh, Dave. <clears throat> While I'm looking that up, other hot topics. Yeah, because I've... I'm you all a happy flight. Uh, aren't you all going to Canada next week? You still have time to hit the road to get up there. Come on. See you there. Be there. Be square. Um, 
I've actually now been bugged by somebody at Ripe on whether I was going to be at BSD CAN next week. So just tell them where to send your travel details. Yeah, you've got their Amex card or something like it, right? Yeah. Visa. Fine. Okay. So, uh, oh, you took it off the screen before. Well, I have bumped it in chat. Um, uh, rule number one: have your links ready. So ASA. Really. Come on, get me the right screen. Never heard of them. Anybody, can anybody tell me what ASA stands for? Uh, Various feature routers by Cisco. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, 32 gigs RAM, terabyte of M.2, sales, 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 limited stock move quickly. There you go. Technical specs, blah, 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 blah. Um, do we have some core 80 core there we go next steps uh technical specs no let's oh, just you jump get down. this is a 2u24 bay <clears throat> is that a pretty picture no is this what you bought mike oh god no uh no i've got an old uh thunder x that rebecca cran found to be way too slow and she kindly sent it. So it's been patiently waiting for its AZFS test and this day to arrive. So anyway, Rodney, there's the link in chat. There's the spec. I already got it up in another window. And Good man. Okay. <laughs> so if anyone has 2,500 bucks burning a hole in their pocket, probably plus shipping, let her rip. Like and subscribe. As yeah. a secret, a a ASA is who most of the parts came from that built the first four years of my hardware. Oh, well, there you go. But back to FreeBSD 1.0. This is okay. where the hardware for FTP.CD-ROM came from. And Well, I look forward to show until in a week or two. How about that? Anything else, or shall we call it good? Antrenig, you may have the honors. Uh, like, and did we lose you again? Yeah, you're still here. Oh, you're muted. Anyway. Like and subscribe. Thank you, Rodney. <laughs> yeah. Chris's hair trigger on those cues, which is great. But uh, well, uh, Dan and Dan who left, see you in Ottawa. Everyone else, try to hit the road or jump in a plane. It'll be amazing. Have a great one. Bye.